Revenue Commissioner Myron France has been touring the state talking with business leaders about what they think it's going to take to improve the tax climate. He's here now to discuss these tours. Commissioner, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Let's begin with your tax tour. And, you know, I studied the 34-page PowerPoint. And why don't I let you encapsulate the message? Well, thank you. The governor was really concerned when we started uh, last fall thinking about the tax reform debate and about how to frame it up properly so that people could get involved and they could understand what was going on. And one of the big things that the governor and I talked about <clears throat> was making sure that we had uh, input from people around the state. So I've been going out to a number of different, I've been to I think 18 cities now, we've had 33 meetings, talked to over 56 legislators, almost 3,000 people so far, and we have an advisory group of mayors. So that's what we've done so far. We're not done yet. But what I'm really saying to people as I'm on the tax reform tour is the problem of balance. We're out of balance in terms of our property tax, our sales tax, and our income tax. It used to be in Minnesota that we talked about the three legs of, this, of the revenue stool, and here we are. It used to be that the, the uh, yeah. property tax, yeah, the, prop. the um, income tax, and the, and the sales tax each were about a third. So this is from um, 1999, and as you can see, in 1999, 30.4% of the revenue for the general fund came from property tax. Then, if you look in income, it's 34.8%. <clears throat> and if you look at the sales tax, it was 347 Now, it's not perfectly balanced, but you can see the, uh, the three-legged stool actually stands up on its own three feet. And there's, uh, there's always going to be some difference between one year and another year. But if you, if you fast forward to 2010, we'll look at our other prop here. This is 2010 taxes. So if you look at this, now sales taxes, taxes or revenues are down to 26.6%. Property tax is way up almost 40%, 39.8%. And finally, income tax has stayed about the same, 33.6%. So we've seen this shifting where we, the state is relying much more on property tax now than it used to rely uh, in the past. Well, and do you think a part of that is, as I, um, I noticed that the, the other stool was from 1999, so it was before the business property tax was implemented. Do you credit that for being a big part of why property tax is much more of a percentage of our revenue now? That's one of the reasons. And the other real, really good reason is the fact that we, we, had some, we had some income tax reductions in 1999 and 2000. So a combination of income tax rate reductions and then a reliance on the statewide business property tax and then a continued reliance on property taxes throughout the decade in 2000. And also the sales tax has been eroding. One of the things you may have seen in the, in the slide presentation is that we're losing more and more revenue to online purchases from out-of-state retailers. And we're also, the whole economy is changing and more and more people are spending their money on services rather than goods. And in Minnesota, we tend to tax at the sales tax level we tend to tax goods more than services. So there's another reason that the sales tax is eroding. So all in all, we've really neglected the balance issue uh, in the last decade. And the governor really wants to make sure that when we go forward and we listen to people in the different, around the state, we listen to their concerns about, is this out of balance a problem for them? And we're hearing over and over again that people really are concerned that we need to re balance our, our revenue for the state. Get more specific on what you're hearing from business owners and people as you do these tours. What are some of the suggestions and have there been any, any aha moments? Uh, there have been uh, several actually. What's interesting is first of all, everyone agrees. Business people, individuals, farmers, students, business people, doctors, lawyers, that it's too complex. Our system has gotten so complex that it takes that it's too much time to complete your taxes and do your forms. So everyone agrees that that's something. I'd that agree with that. Yeah, isn't that. I mean, that's kind of an easy one. But unfortunately, it's hard to solve. But the other really interesting thing that people are saying is a lot of businesses and individuals are saying they, they're willing to give up their particular deductions that they, they benefit from if it would mean a more simple tax base. One of the real principles of tax reform is to broaden the, the base. So, for example, in the uh, sales tax area, we exclude a lot of items from tax. If we broaden the base, we could probably lower the rate. In the income tax, we have a lot of deductions and credits that we have in the, in the tax code. If we eliminated some of those, we could broaden the base and lower the rate. So there's, there's a lot of, uh, of uh, I want to say, a lot of support for the idea of simplification and let's, there will, people are willing to give up deductions and credits and expenditures for a, for a system that's more fair, where everyone pays their fair share. So let's tie in what you are hearing to the tax bills that are proposed in both the House and Senate at this point. Do you think that those bills do help achieve that goal? Will they simplify things a bit? 
I don't think so. And that's one of the concerns I met with uh, Chair uh, Davids in the House Tax Committee and Senator Ortman, Chair Ortman in the uh, Senate Tax Committee. And we've talked about these issues. Uh, there are certainly some, some areas where, you know, the, uh, we could make some agreement on, I think. But we're concerned, that the governor's concerned about the fact that both of these bills rely on either taking money out of the current reserves to fund tax relief or using money from renters' refunds to to uh, support business tax relief. But the more fundamental concern we have is the fact that the property tax relief for businesses in the Senate bill, for example, and in the House bill, target just business uh, property owners. There's a small relief provision for homeowners. But in, in essence, it's really focused on the business property tax. And the governor's concern you know, at, in terms of uh, property tax relief that we, we really affect all kinds of properties, homeowners, uh, apartment renters um, and uh, farmers. So, the 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 tax bill, so the two tax bills themselves, don't really address widespread tax relief. You did talk about, briefly about the business property tax. Let's talk just a little bit more <clears throat> about that. We did talk with Chair Ortman. It'll it'll appear a bit more a bit later in the program. She contends that, again, the idea was to, when they implemented this, the idea was to take some relief off of homeowners. It didn't work. And therefore, let's give some relief to these businesses, even small businesses, and therefore they will begin to reinvest in the community, maybe increase salaries, hire more people. That's what they're hoping to achieve with this. Is it something that you and the governor could support? Well, the, the concern about that, uh, certainly we support tax relief. The concern about uh, the hope that by reducing the statewide property taxes, businesses will invest more is, is just that, it's a hope. And that's why the governor proposed a Jobs Now credit, which requires someone to actually hire somebody. So he's really focused on jobs and creating jobs. And, and the, uh, property, the statewide property tax relief provision is more of a general tax relief that doesn't guarantee a job's going to be created at all. Okay, Commissioner, we're just about out of time, but let's pontificate for a moment then. How do you see these final negotiations going between the governor and the two chairs to produce a bill that maybe all three can support? Well, I think the important thing is that we're, we're talking and that we're going to continue to talk. Uh, the concern actually is the funding source. And the number one issue we have to resolve before we do anything else is what or how are we going to fund tax relief or tax changes or any kind of funding priorities because the governor really believes that it has to be real revenue not out of the reserve and not creating structural deficits. And that's the problem we have to resolve. Okay, and you're hopeful? I'm always hopeful, yes. Okay, Commissioner Myron Friends, thank you for joining us on Capitol Report. We appreciate your time. My pleasure.